The Platinum Dungeon is one of three coin dungeons in the special tab for Fort Solgris. Now this dungeon might not be visited by a lot of people because the entry is a little steep. And we're talking six whole Platinum Coins. And it's generally recommended not to burn your Platinum Coins unless the units that they belong to are already maxed out. In which case you're probably going to spend your dupes to further maxing additional units that the Platinum Coin Shop has to offer. Now if you're in a position where you have an abundance and you don't really want to exchange what's available in the coin shop, and the Platinum Coin Dungeon can offer you some decent alternatives. We have Super Awakening Coins, a couple different Evolution Pendants, and Hammers and UR Stones. So if you were to visit this dungeon, then how should we tackle it? So the team that we're going to try out today is relatively straightforward. We have some unknown synergy, some Ragnarok boosts, and a little bit of weak point action thanks to Tier. Now, I think the teams don't really matter all too much because the dungeon is relatively easy. The only thing that is specific, however, is the middle and bottom row is going to be C gear for all of our active units. And that is because the initial mobs, their defenses scale based off ours. So we want to lower ours as much as possible so that we can increase our effective damage. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you can head over to the closet and start removing some outfits and headpieces of all these units. And if you wanted to bring the sweat to an all-time high, you could do the exact same for the links. I, however, did not do that, because that is a lot of outfits to unequip and re-equip. Now for the card sets, we are running the attack boost for unknowns, and then also stacking this with attack food. It should have some relatively simple runs, so we'll go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so starting up on phase one, you are greeted by three little spider links. How cute. So we're going to go ahead and check their stats, check their passives real quick. Um, it looks like all basic stats are actually boosted based off our maximums. Uh, unfortunately, our maximums are still pretty high because of the synergies. So we're going to go ahead and open up with double AoE, get rid of the tier single target. Uh, it looks like Tyr is hitting for a literal mill and still not one-tapping, which is insane. But we do have the Freya AoE to follow up, and then the tier single target is probably the worst here. At least get rid of that, or the half of Freya stands cancel to get some better draw. Because this dragon does have a revive, so we're going to want to drop our best single targets. In our case, it's going to be a Freya Floods, followed by the Freya Cleave. And that is going to be a 3 card kill for phase 2, a 5 card run, 5 card run in total. Now you'll see we actually have 4 boxes here. And what that means is that every single spider, including the main boss, did in fact drop a chest. Now if we compare that to the SA dungeon, we were resetting just to guarantee an extra drop. Not even thinking about if it could be bronze, silver, or gold. I guess if you were really sweating, you were probably sweating for silvers or golds. But these guys are always going to drop a box. Which means, if we take a look at their drop rates, we have 17% when it comes to golds, 33 for silvers, and the bronze are at 50%. When it comes to the SA dungeon, gold boxes were at 8%. Uh, I think silvers were 17 and then bronzes were 75. So about a double double up on these drop rates. Which means for this dungeon, we are no longer, or not no longer, we are not at all resetting to guarantee a box. We are in fact going to reset every time for a gold box. As you'll see, all of these runs are going to have a gold chest because we did in fact do that. And comparing again to that same dungeon, you have an hour long to do these runs instead of 30 minutes. And they also chop it down from 12 to 6. So why not take advantage of such a wide time frame and such few runs to maximize your drops? I'm going to go ahead and put up my full set of runs on the screen because we did run through this already. And we can take a look at the value that we gained and compare it to the value that it took to enter, which was again 6 plat coins. And based off the plat coin shop, we can pretty much put a value on most of the items here. So an SSR pendant is one plat coin, an SA coin is about three, three to one for the plat coin. 
Um, the SR pendants are 10 to 1, not even going to bother counting those. And the hammers and the UR stones are a little rare of a drop. You're really only going to see those in training cave and defense. So you could probably say the they are about two, maybe three plat coins in total, uh, depending on the drop. Because they also only work in, in stacks, right? UR stones are only going to work in a stack of 10, hammers in a stack of 5, assuming you're using the best gear. So, again, these drops, compared to six plat coins, we're looking at a two to three times the value. We didn't hit a lot of SSR pendants, but the amount of coins, stones, and hammers we got are, are it's pretty big. You can also consider that the hammers and the stones are not available in the coin shop. This is a pretty solid alternative to using your extra coins, extra plat coins, because, like I said, mirror drops, drops are much easier to hit than some of the other dungeons, and I think it took about, I don't know, 15 runs total of resetting for the gold boxes, so I think it's pretty worth. So that is going to be the Plat Coin Dungeon. If you guys like it, drop a thumb. Maybe you sub if you're into that, and I'll see you in the next one.